life. And today we have a special treat for you. Here, I, we're here with Carlo Valdez, an American bobsledder with Team USA. Carlo just returned from the 2018 Winter Olympics in South Korea. So, Carlo, how does it feel to be home? Uh, well, Larry, thanks for having me, by the way. Uh, oh, here, your show is pretty popular, so it's an honor for me to be on your show. But to be home, it's, it feels it feels great to be home. Uh, it's been, I don't know, since last last June, almost eight months, nine months. I don't know, I kind of lost count, but yeah, it feels great to be home and to kind of decompress a little bit. It's been a long season, uh, and yeah, I just can't uh, wait to get some downtime in. So, how does it feel to be sliding down a sheet of ice at 90 miles per hour? It's good. It feels good. Uh, I mean, it, it's actually, I shouldn't say it feels good. It's actually pretty violent. It doesn't feel that great, but you can actually feel the speed, and it's it's a, it's a rush, you know, it's, it's a lot of adrenaline going through your body, and it's it's one of those things where you're like, okay, why, why am I in a sled with no seatbelts going 90 plus miles an hour? And like, who, who would do that? So, uh, I don't know how I got drawn to the sport, but it was just something that worked out for me, and yeah, I'm still doing it today, so going that fast down, you know, a little shoot of ice in a sled is kind of freaky, but at the same time, I love it. I'm sure it is scary, sort of. Yeah. What was your favorite track to slide down when you and Team USA were traveling in Europe? My favorite track is St. Moritz, Switzerland. Um, oh, that's cool. Just because it's the only naturally made track in the world left, and so that means you know a whole bunch of workers have to come in with a bunch of snow, build this track from scratch each and every year. And it's the longest track. It's it's the most scenic, most beautiful track you'll you'll go to. I mean, St. Moritz, Switzerland, it kind of speaks for itself. Just the way, you know, the, its history there and uh, the other sports. But bobsled it has a long history there, and they're still building the track today. So that's definitely something that everyone has to do and go to St. Moritz, not just to see the city, but to see the track and the races going on. Nice. Would you recommend other young Americans to try out for Team USA bobsled? I'd recommend it to anyone, but just to give you an idea, the prototypical bobsledder is 6'2", 220 pounds, give or take. So if you're around that height and weight with that kind of athleticism, speed and power, then you have to try it out. You have to go through the whole process like I did, you know, combine push champs, team trials, and then, you know, all that leads to making the national team. So there, there's, there's steps you have to take and some sacrifices you have to make. So, you know, if you really want to do it, you, you better commit and go, go for it 100% because if you're not into it, then you're not going to make the team. And you really have to make sure that you're, you're all in, buy into the process, and, and you know, hopefully it will turn into – you make the Olympic team like like I did one or one day. So, what are your plans for the future? Uh, my plans. I'm. I plan on taking two two months off, or not two months, two years off, and uh, yeah, I just want to decompress a little bit and get some get some rest, and yeah, I just want to enjoy myself for a little bit. All right. And also, I see um, you have some medals and stuff. Yeah, a whole bunch of uh, medals, World Cup medals. Uh, that's just stuff that I've accumulated over the past three years. And uh, yeah, those are just small accolades. And then. Would you like to show us some? Yeah, sure. Do you want? Yeah, they're all right here. This is all the stuff that I've done uh, over the past few years. Um, got this is Athlete Choice Award. I won got two years ago. That's voted by the peers. Um, this is from the uh, Eagles, third place uh, in four man last year World Cup. A few other medals, fifth place in World Championships, Rookie of the Year. Uh, this is third overall in four man uh, in the World Cup rankings. Uh, last year, and this is second overall in the 
two-man rankings uh, last year. So a lot of cool stuff. Um, just small, small things. Didn't get anything at the Olympics, which I'm bummed about, but I'm going to go for it again in four years and see, we'll see what happens. And then this is my speed suit. This is what we wear uh, in the freezing cold with nothing else but this. When it's, you know, zero degrees, negative degrees out, you know, whatever it is, it's cold. Uh, but it helps makes us uh, be fast down the track. And uh, these are this is my closing ceremony jacket that I got while being Young Chang, and this is my opening ceremony jacket. And it's just one of many things. We get too much stuff, so I, you know, it's only going to show you small amounts of the gear that we get. Nice. Well, Carlo, I want to thank you for joining us today. We wish you good luck in the future. Yeah, thanks, Larry. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So tell me, Larry, huh? what does it feel like to wear an Olympian's jacket, especially the one worn in the closing ceremonies for the 2018 Winter Olympic Games? It feels amazing. It looks like you yeah. got a little bit of growing into yeah, to be able to fit yeah. into it. Yeah, but I, I think, think I do have to grow into it. So flex your muscle. Let's see what it's like. All right. Flex your arm muscle. There you go. Good job. I bet you it's better to wear the coat than it is that thin outfit when it's cold, isn't it, that they have to run in. Well, thank you, Larry. You're going to sign off now? Yep. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Leave down in the comment below if you, um, like, if you know any Olympians or anything. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.